Good morning, this is Will Schofield. It is July the 24th, 2020 on Friday. And here today just to give an update in terms of where we are with uh, what we're excited about, which will be the opening of a new school year in the Hall County School District. Um, I will be the first to admit that wherever the plan lands, it will be different than we've ever experienced before. But once again, uh, our goal is to thrive this year and not survive. Uh, just some updates and what you should see on your screen is, uh, is something that is uh, very important uh, for this school district to keep in mind as we make plans and go forward. And I'm going to go over that mitigation closure matrix uh, in just a moment so that people know that there is some deep thought not only amongst what is going on at the school level uh, when we make decisions about what type of schooling to have, on a day by day, on a week by week basis, but also there is a firm realization that we are part of this community and that what we do affects our community and what this community does and uh, how it behaves uh, affects your local school district. So, so first of all, all, all of our plans, again, uh, if I had to give you a top five of where, what things are driven by, our number one, are we doing everything possible to ensure the safety of our students, of our team members, of their families uh, as we move forward? Uh, number two, and it's very closely related to number one, and that is we are firmly uh, of a belief uh, that so many of our students are in dire need of brick and mortar schooling, of the services that school provides, uh, that, that our plan is gonna continue to be to get students back in a safe manner with some face-to-face -face instruction just as soon uh, as is possible because we know how important uh, that is. One of the things that we also know is that in order to pull off school this year in a different way, our team is gonna need some additional time uh, to retool, to retrain, uh, to communicate with families about how we make the most of, uh, of all of our experiences, whether it's a family that chose 100% virtual uh, or whether it's a family that chose uh, a brick and mortar option and how that brick and mortar option may have to change again, depending on the situation uh, in our schools and community about what's happening uh, with COVID. So, so that being said, um, I guess the only other piece that I would add to those top factors is number one, I appreciate all of the emails and, and texts of support uh, that, that we are getting from, from family members, from team members, uh, from students themselves. Uh, the vast majority of those folks are in agreement that virtual uh, school is not equal to brick and mortar learning and that in whatever safe way we can, uh, we need to get some students back into our schools uh, and being associated with uh, these 3,400 team members that care so deeply uh, about their well-being. But, but one of the things that people often tag on at the end is, is, that, uh, is that they don't admire being sitting in this particular seat today, and they make comments like, it's sure going to be hard to make everybody happy. Um, let me just be e extremely candid and honest and share my heart with you. I want to serve this community and its boys and girls. Um, but when it comes to laying my head on my pillow at night, the idea of is everybody happy, um, that's, that's way down the list right now. Uh, what I want is everybody to be as safe as possible. I desperately want our young people to be reconnected uh, with the schooling and the activities that help them thrive uh, and move forward. Um, and I'm very comfortable with the fact uh, that regardless of what we do, uh, perhaps a majority of individuals won't be happy uh, with the decisions that, that your school district makes. All I can do is commit to you that we will make the decisions that make the most common sense based on, based on what we know about what's happening uh, with individuals within our community, within our state, within our nation. It'll be based on uh, medical advice uh, and advice from epidemiologists and from our local health care system. Um, and at the end of the day, it will have very little to do with emotion um, and individuals who may have a extreme bent one way or another about where we need to be. That being said, I did want to share this mitigation closure matrix with you. And, uh, and you can see one of the things I want is to make sure that people don't think that we're doing some sort of uh, Karnak Magnificent 
uh, or rock, paper, scissors. Do we close school today or don't we close school today? It's it's based on two sets of, of data. Number one, across the top or, or across the horizontal axis, it's based on what's going on within our schools today. Uh, by the way, we have uh, all three of these cases happening within our 37 schools uh, as of today, and that's with no school going on. We have a number of schools, the majority that have no cases currently uh, that we know of. Uh, we have some that have a couple, and we have uh, probably one school that has four or more active cases going on right now. As a perfect example, we also have an entire department in one of our, uh, in one of our buildings right now that is quarantined for 14 days because at work they've been doing a tremendous job of social distancing, of wearing their face coverings, of doing everything right, but they happened to let their guard down, went to lunch together. Uh, one of them has shown up positive for COVID, uh, and with the tracing that's gone on, they are now out of work and monitoring their systems, uh, their, their own personal uh, health for 14 days. So this is something that complacency is going to have no place in the Hall County School District. So once again, uh, you can see based on this matrix that the horizontal again has to do with what's, what's going on in our schools. And then on the vertical, uh, it takes uh, into account what is happening in our local community and in our local hospital system. Uh, first of all, we're all familiar with the number of cases on a daily basis coming up positive in our local community. Uh, unfortunately, that metric continues to go in the wrong direction. But the other thing, and I just can't thank our local hospital system enough, is we're paying close attention to the internal metrics over at the hospital system having to do with uh, particularly a couple of things. Number one, what are the percent positive cases that they're showing uh, with their tests? At the beginning of this pandemic, um, those numbers would run anywhere from 5 to 10 percent positive. Uh, most recent days, those tests have been running as high as 30 percent positive. Why is that a big deal? Uh, it's a big deal because that has tended to be a predictive factor of how critical care beds fill up in our local hospital system a week or two later. Um, the hospital system unfortunately set a record in the last couple of days for the number of patients in critical care beds. And again, I would say uh, the school district has to play a role in paying attention to that because what we do affects the community, what the community does affects us. So you can see that right now uh, in terms of this vertical axis, we would be in this red area. We've got high community spread and we've got a hospital system uh, that is being stretched in terms of their capacity to care for those that are in that particular situation. So, so once again, we continue to, uh, to, to make plans. We've got plan A, we've got plan B, we've got plan C. Uh, but one thing we don't want to do, which we're seeing in a number of uh, districts throughout the state and nation, is make a decision today, change it tomorrow, revisit it next week. Um, as of right now, our employees are still coming back to work August 3rd. Uh, I don't see that changing unless we have some major changes in the numbers going on in our community uh, and in our state, because regardless of what our plan is uh, for the first uh, month or so, our people are going to need, again, significant uh, training and retooling uh, to be ready to provide an educational experience that our community deserves. So once again, uh, we'll be coming back to you often. We'll provide and be providing you information. And uh, once again, I would just uh, solicit your support in realizing that the current situation does not lend itself uh, to either of the extremes. Uh, we will not uh, put on blinders and say that I hope things go well and that people don't get sick. And uh, we will not say we need to bunker up uh, in our basements and we'll see you. We'll have school again in person in a few months. So, so once again, Thank you for giving us the uh, incredible and sacred trust of, of looking after this local school district. Uh, we commit to do that to the best of our abilities, and I hope that everybody uh, has a great weekend. Thank you.